21 is Dave Raptoy from Swanton and Shotgun from Clayburg. It's the number two for Metal Man. Eight Renegades in attendance tonight. And they're ready to run their first qualifier. Green flag. Here comes Cody Benoit trying to split the middle. Rob Favreau drifts up. Benoit had to get on the binders. And they're even down the back stretch going to turn three. Rob Favreau's on the inside, and it's Keith O'Neill with the zero on the outside. Cody Benoit's going to run down to the inside of the racetrack, try to take second away from Keith O'Neill. At the stripe, Benoit had that second spot. He'll move through on the inside, grabbing second solid now off of turn number two. Keith O'Neill runs third. Battle for fourth between the 60 of Roger Labonte and the 43 of Josh Terry. Then it's Dave Raptoy in car 21. Rob Favreau leading by a car link. Cody Benoit running in the second spot. Some of the teams in this division putting racing slicks on. Wider tires to help them around the racetrack as they're three wide racing for third. Dave Raptoy in the 21 on the inside. Roger Labonte in the middle. Keith O'Neill on the outside. He's going to lose two spots. Dave Raptoy goes to third with a 21. And then Rick Doner with that number eight has uh, that car race legal for the Renegade division. He's working on setup and he's trying to just dial the thing in and get it ready. Get a jump start on 2011. They totally changed the setup in that number eight Renegade. Out front, it's Rob Favreau with the 27. He's holding off the one of Cody Benoit. The lead is a car length and a half at the start finish line. Benoit running second. Dave Raptoy's moved to third. A couple of weeks back, Dave was experimenting with slicks on that race car from one of the American Canadian Tour late model teams. Two laps to go for Rob Favreau. Favreau and Benoit have checked out on third place runner Dave Raptoy. Roger Labonte in the 64th, Josh Terry fifth, Keith O'Neill sixth, Rick Doner is seventh, and then Metal Man is eighth. White flag out for Rob Favreau, who's pulling away from Cody Benoit. Favreau's lead is up to four car lengths. Here he comes off of turn number four. Checkered flag is out. It's going to be an easy win for Rob Favreau. In the number 27, Cody Benoit finishing second with a one. It'll be Dave Raptoy third with a 21. Fourth, Roger Labonte. Fifth, Josh Terry. Sixth, Keith O'Neill. Seventh will be Rick Doner. And eighth will be Metal Man with the number two. Sportsman next season, he'll start seventh. And it's the 56 for Casey St. Clair. First time ever at Airborne for Mike White, who is in the one at the back of the pack. Green flag. Buck O'Branham looks inside the Jimmy Bushy number 11, and there goes Branham. Three wide for third. Robin Wood is down on the inside trying to get to that third spot. Billy Twaits running at his door on the outside. Right now has third, but Robin Wood trying to move through. Jimmy Bushy second with the 11. Bucko's trying to check out on everybody else. There's a car that has spun over at turn number four. Still parked, facing the wrong way on a one-way street, and that's going to bring out a yellow flag. Drivers try to get on the binders as quickly as in one lap, out to about a five-car length advantage over Jimmy Bushy. We'll set the pace on this restart. Robin Wood will try to hang with him from the inside of row number two, try to get to that second spot, perhaps, as the green flag's back out. Branham leading off of turn number two. Look out, we got a car spinning. That's Kenny St. Germain in the eight. St. Germain spins over in the second turn. He keeps it rolling and will stay under green. Robin Wood passes Jim Bushy on the inside. He'll go to the second spot. Jimmy Bushy running in third. The first time that the clinch black flag has been pointed at Keith Pelkey in the sportsman division. Robin Wood pulling up on the back bumper of the 20 of Branham. Running about a half car length off the back bumper into turns one and two. Branham leads, Woodard running in the second spot. Jimmy Bushy's running third. Fourth, it is Billy Twaits. Fifth is Mike White. 
was a regular runner over at Mohawk. So he goes from the dirt onto the asphalt. Talk about learning curve. But he's doing well right now in that fifth spot. Robin Wood looks inside a three and four. Buckle Branham's got that inside line though and he is keeping them at bay as they're halfway in the qualifier for the sportsman cars. Now Robin Wood's gonna look to the outside. Bucko drifts high off of turn number two. Robin slides back down to the inside into the third turn. Branham cuts back down to the inside. Robin Wood trying to eye away around car number 20. He's looked high, he's looked low. Bucko Branham's been able to keep him at bay. Wood will go back to the outside over in turn number two. Down the back stretch, Robin Wood looking back down to the inside into the third and fourth turn. Can Wood get to the outside of Branham? No. The slow car of Kenny St. Germain on the inside might have impeded the progress of the 20, but Robin could not quite get there. Now he'll go back to the outside over in the second turn. Bucko Branham, Robin Wood, Jimmy Bushy, and Billy Twaits running in the top four. Keith Pelkey is fifth with a 24. Here comes Robin Wood again to the outside. Steven Brissett in the 59 will get back down to the inside of the racetrack. The 20 of Branham, the 61, worked three wide around the slower car. Robin Wood started to pull up on the outside of the door of Buck O'Brana, but again backed out. Here he comes again after him in three and four. Racing off the fourth turn of the white flag for the lead. Branham leading by about seven feet. Wood trying to pull even over in turn number two. Down the back stretch, Buck O'Brana leading by oh, half car length. Now drawing even the 61 on the outside. Robin Wood stays in it going into turn number four. Drag race for the win. Checkered flag is out. It's going to be Robin Wood by about a foot and a half. Robin Wood in car number 61 is able to make the winning pass off the fourth turn. And he wins the qualifier for the JNS Steel Sportsman tonight. Buck O'Brannon finishes second. Jimmy Bushy was third. Craig Orsby is in the zero car. That's a former... Don Scarborough machine. He'll start in the sixth spot and shotgun on the field is Michael Labresh. He's from Joliet, Quebec. In the one, green flag. There goes Bertillon. Barnaby has broke. The 25 and the 46. The Vian team cars got together over in turn number two as the Barnaby two. George Foley, the 46. Craig Ormsby, the zero. And Michael Labresh in the regular one. We'll call it the 1L for tonight. Green flag. Well, with Bertiome inheriting the point, with him being the fastest guy in practice, he's checking out. But again, you can see the different strategies of the teams. You've got the 25 with basically the same appearance that it would typically have on a regular Saturday night race car. Same could be said for Craig Ormsby in the zero and Michael Labresh in the one. Throw some wings and sail panels on it. And Pierre Bertillon, who has been known once or twice to find some gray area in the rule book, sometimes not only find the gray area, but get caught finding the gray area in the rule book, is running away out front. Not that I'm saying that Pierre Bertillon is a good cheater. When he heard there were no rules, the biggest smile came on <laughs> his face. <laughs> he just knows how to make things go fast. Sometimes the translation of the rule book isn't always the best. That's because our rule book is in English. This is true. But you know, you know what this sets up, though, Rick? Maybe this would be a good night to have Robbie go down and do the Victory Lane interviews. He'd get a chance to experience trying to conduct an interview with Pierre Bertillon. You're already giving Bertie on the win? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, the way things look right now. And based on his times on the scoring monitor, he was about a half second faster than just about everybody else. Now, he better be careful going around his other race car that Michael Labresh is in. George Foley running in the second spot with a 46. Then it's Mike Finney in the 26P. Michel Vian is in the 25. 
And then Michael Labresh in the 1L. He's gone down a lap. White flag is out for Pierre Bertillon, who is in a different postal code than everybody else. That's what's one and two, three. That's what they, yeah, they use letters and numbers up there. All right, here he comes. Pierre Bertillon wins by half a track over George Foley in the 46. Six modifieds ready to run in the second qualifier. All right, here they come off the fourth turn. Green flag. Craig Riel with the CO2. Dan Brown with the 40. Brown looking outside. Matt Woodruff with a 55 moving through on the inside of Dan Brown. Well, take that, wings and all. Matt Woodruff just flies right on past down on the inside. Oh, here comes Brown back. Brown's got more wings than the D Detroit hockey team. And they're not red. Dan Brown trying to take the second spot back away from Matt Woodruff. And Woodruff says, eh, eh, not yet. Craig Rios checking out up front. His fast time so far, 16.4. That'll give you an idea just what a different uh, time zone well, Pierre Bertillon's in. Well, it's not just the wings in the real car. He doesn't have the Sunoco race fuel tonight. He's got Molson in it. <laughs> in the car or in his belly? Probably both. Better not be in the belly yet. Matt Woodruff in the 55, hanging on to that second spot. He's pulling away from Dan Brown. Riel's fast time now is 16.3. That's a 101 mile an hour average with the CO2. Woodruff running in second, Brown running third, Cody Benoit is fourth. Andy Powell running in the fifth spot. Jason Bruno is sixth. Craig Riel checking out on the rest of the field. 16.33, the fast time so far for Craig Real, but again, Bertio ran a 15.7. So he's more than a half second faster than Real, who's the fast guy in this qualifier. Matt Woodruff in the 55, second. Dan Brown, third, fourth. And the B1 is Cody Benoit. Two laps to go for Craig Rio. Dan Brown coming back after the 55 on the inside, but good momentum built up for Matt Woodruff, and he's able to hold on to the second spot, working the outside of the track. White flag for Craig Riel. Matt Woodruff with a double nickel. He's held off Dan Brown, and he's got about a half more lap to hold him off for that second spot. Checkered flag about to fly for Craig Riel. Here comes Craig off of turn four. Easy win for the Plattsburgh Radiator Machine. The 55 of Woodruff second, Dan Brown third. Cody Benoit fourth, fifth. Is Tim Gadway. First of two for the four cylinders coming off turn four, down to the green. Bouillet gets a good start on the inside. He's gonna lead him up the back stretch. Not a good start for Tim LaFountain and Tim Gadway. The Tims spin in turn two. They both try to refire. LaFountain's going. Gadway's going. Is he going quick enough? Yes. He's going the wrong way. No. Everybody gets by the Gadway. Chris LeVair has moved his number four up into the outside starting spot. He will restart. Alongside the double zeros, we're going to go green next time by. Still a third, but he's not in third, he's in eighth. Ready for a start, one lap down, five laps remain, we're back to the green. This time Chris LeVere gets the good start on the outside and LeVere will lead him up the backstretch. 
Bouye settles into the number two spot with Whalen third, LaGrave fourth, and Clark fifth. Martin in the sixth spot, LaFountain is seventh. Flying into that corner goes the 72 of LaGrave. That forced the 11 up high. LaGrave takes that third spot away, dropping Whalen back to fourth. Clark runs fifth, Martin is sixth, although Martin trying to pick up a couple of spots on the backstretch. He will. He'll stick a nose in front in a battle with Whalen for the fourth spot. Halfway this time by your leader is Chris LaVere. Good gap back to Joe Bouye, who runs second in the double zero. There's LaGrave and Martin, who starts to close in on that third place car. Clark looks now to the inside of Whalen as those cars come into turn four. Whalen drifts high, opens up the door inside for Clark. Clark cannot take advantage as of yet. Two laps to go for Chris LeVere. They're starting to close in on the second place car. Bouye has second for now, but for how long? White flag is out. Martin just zooming by on the inside to get LeGrave for the third spot. And now he'll look to the inside of Bouye as they head into turn one. Sideways goes Bouye. He does a nice job hanging on. Martin gets in contact with LaGrave 72. That may hand Bouye the second spot. Your winner coming off turn four, Chris LeVere to win it all. Joe Bouye is going to bring that double zero home after the nice save in the number two spot. With Randy Martin third, Curtis LeGrave fourth in the top five, run it out. Old car. The 03 is Speedy Brissett. Eric Sales is the new owner of the 95. And shotgun on the field in the 23, Jim Collins. Green flag is out. Sanam on the inside, Woodward on the outside. They race side by side in through turn one, into turn two, and up the back stretch. It's going to be Woodward to grab the lead. Three wide action to get around that three car. Coro on the inside is going to move up and take that second spot. He's going to bring the 20 right with him and go to third. Richner's 21 hits the fourth spot. Sanam is back to fifth. Eric Sales in the 95 is not going to be fifth for long. He is on the move. Three wide action into turn three as Carl is your new leader. Richner on the inside. LaFountain in the middle. Woodward in the far outside. Three wide for the number two spot. Eric Sales has got that 95 car flying up toward the front. He's now fourth. And he looks to the inside of Richner as they head up the back stretch. Coro leads it. LaFountain second. Sales on the inside. Sticks his nose in front for third. Richner coming right back at him on the outside. Halfway. Now LaFountain on the inside will stick his nose in front and start to edge out on Coro up the back stretch. It's Jamie LaFountain, your leader. Brian Coro, second. Eric Sales, third. Scott Richner is fourth. Chad Collins has the 0-2 in the fifth spot with two to go. LaFountain starts to pull away from Sales as they race into turn three. Three cars still continue to contest that third spot. Coro has it. Richner, fourth. Collins is fifth, one to go. Richner looks to take third spot away from Coro now as they head up the back stretch the final time. Here comes Chad Collins on the far inside. He wants a piece of that third place battle. Off turn four, checkered flag in the air. Jamie LaFountain wins it. Eric Sales second. Third spot at the line goes to the 0 2 of Chad Collins. Fourth to the six of Brian Caro and Speedy Brissett will run. Sylvain Massico in a 66 quarter in car number 65. Sylvain Lacroix in the 123. Metal Man in the two, West Mooney the 79. Clem Kucher in the one. Oh, Clem's not going to make it. The car was out for practice and uh, had some problems getting up to speed and will not make it for the race. LaCroix is your leader in the D1 with Sedan right there on the outside. They run as they start, coming off to number four. Eight laps, these 
Vintage stock cars from Quebec will go. It continues to be the D1 of Bruno Lacroix and the three of Alain Seren. Seren on the outside will take the lead as they come off turn four. Lacroix is back to second. On the outside is Sylvain Maxco to the 65. He will challenge for that number two spot. Sticking nose in front of the back stretch. And here comes Lang just carrying on the outside in the 35. He will move into fourth. Oh, we got a car spinning in turn three. Metalman just got by. That was the 123 of Sylvain Lacroix. Karen has moved his 35 to the outside and will challenge now the 65 for second. Massacote on the inside. Karen on the outside. They are side by side for that second spot, but Karen goes right on by. Lang just carrying a long time competitor here at the Airborne Speedway in the 1970s, back into the 60s. Moved his 35 car into the number two spot. Going to have to try to avoid the slow 123 as he gets out of harm's way. On the bottom of the racetrack. Now Lance Duran in the 69 Camaro is your leader, but he's got Lange just carrying to deal with in the 35. Two laps to go. Can Karen get by on the outside? Can Massico find a way by on the inside? White flag will be coming out this time by. It's still Alain Saran in the number three. He is your leader, but he has got a mirror full of the 35 of Karen. White flag is out. Half a lap remains for the 35 to try to get by the three. Up the back stretch the final time. It's still Saren the leader. Karen second. They get around the slower car of Mooney. They come off turn four. Checkered flag is in the air. Alan Saren will be your winner in the 69 Camaro. Brandis Karen finishes second. Third spot goes to the 65 of Sylvain Massico. Fourth spot to the 45 of Patrick Ferner. And rounding out your top five in the D1, Bruno Lacroix. And shotgun on the field in the number five from Peru. It's our uh, national anthem singer once in a while. That's Mark Karen in the five. Nine cars, 25 laps, green flag. Here comes Dave Raptoy in the 21, looking to move through. Keith O'Neill darted up to the top of the racetrack, and Raptoy had to get on the binders. Cody Benoit in the number one has moved to third. Josh Terry's working on the outside in the fourth spot. The leader of lap number one is going to be Dave Raptoy in the 21. Cody Benoit running in the second spot. Keith O'Neill works third. Fourth is Josh Terry. Fifth is the 60 for Roger Labounty. Now, Rob Favreau was very fast with that 27 in the qualifier, but he's been boxed since the drop of the green flag. And here comes Cody Benoit looking inside the 21 of Dave Raptoy for the lead. Benoit's got the inside line. Raptoy working on the top of the track. They're even off the second turn, and Raptoy will put the nose back out in front. About three wide racing for fourth. Rob Favreau with the 27. On the inside, coming through to the fourth spot. Not happy with fourth. He's going to take third. Flying past the zero of Keith O'Neill. Cody Benoit has the lead over in turn number two as he has driven past the 21 of Dave Raptoy. There goes Josh Terry into the bunker with the 43. He kicks up some dirt, gets back out on the racetrack. Oh, Tyler Terry's in the 43. So it's Cody Benoit out front with a one, and Dave Raptoy with a 21. Rob Favreau with a 27 is trying to chase him down, and based on times in the qualifier, he's got a shot, even though he's a... Pretty good distance behind the one in the 21 right now. His times were faster than anybody else's. Dave Raptoy had a problem off turn number two, and he has lost a bunch of ground to Cody Benoit with car number one. Benoit went from about three car lengths in front to 12. And the 21 is falling back into the clutches of the 27 of Rob Favreau. In about another half lap, Favreau should be pretty close to that back bumper. Benoit is trying to check out and then hope that this thing stays green because Rob Favreau was able to pull away from him in the qualifier earlier. 
Favreau has closed to a half car length to make that inside a half into two. No, Dave will be able to pull away along the back stretch. Cody Benoit's lead is almost half the front stretch. There goes Dave Raptoy again. That car just darted up towards the wall in turn number four. And that allowed Rob Favreau to close. That allowed Rob Favreau to get to the inside. And it's going to allow Rob Favreau to take second off the second turn. Although Raptoy comes back after him on the outside. Robbie Favreau will be able to finish the pass. And now one car to chase down. That's Cody Benoit in the one. will set the field as they approach the middle stages of the race. Cody Benoit leading, Rob Favreau in second, Dave Raptoy third, Roger Labounty fourth, Keith O'Neill fifth, Tyler Terry in sixth, or so we're told. Seventh is Rick Doner with the number eight. And then it's Middleman with the two. Mark Karen's already gone back to the pits with the five. Rob Favreau is not making much progress in chasing down the one of Cody Benoit. He has pulled away from Dave Raptoy, who was in the third spot. And he's thrown the hook at the one, and he hasn't come close. It's starting to reel him in. Did Benoit have the hood off in the qualifier? Ah, see, you take the hood off, and look at how much faster it becomes. The added weight of that hood just slowing the thing right down. So Rob Favreau goes around Rick Doner to put Rick a lap down. Dave Raptoy will try to do that next. Ten laps to go for Cody Benoit, four-time winner this season. Racing for the fifth spot, Tyler Terry in the 43. And Keith O'Neill in the zero. And that'll be Tyler Terry. He goes up to fifth. Cody Benoit. Putting a lap on Keith O'Neill because O'Neill is headed back to the pits. So another car headed back to the garage area. Mark Karen's already back there. And now the zero, who last time out, lost a tire with the zero car two weeks back. His night is done. Cody Benoit leading by the backstretch over Rob Favreau in what has been a snoozer of a renegade race. I thought when Rob Favreau went to the second spot, he perhaps would have a chance to chase down Cody in the one, but it'd take a miracle about this point. We know one thing's for sure, Rob. Cody Benoit will not be disqualified tonight. He won't have to worry about tech. It'll be five laps to go this time by for Cody Benoit. Cody finished eighth in the Renegade point standings. An exciting Renegade race two weeks ago. That saw Kevin Booten win the Renegade track championship by just two points over the 2008 and 2009 track champ Lonnie Rivers. So Booten takes the Renegade track championship with him back to Swanton, Vermont. Dave Raptoy in that 21 car finished fourth. He's the top point guy racing tonight. Cody Benoit, as I mentioned, a four-time winner, ended up eighth in the point standings. And he is closing in on Rick Doner again. He'll, he would put 
Rick a second lap down. Top four cars are on the lead lap. The 60 of Roger Labounty is the last car on the lead lap. White flag out for Cody Benoit. Rob Favreau crosses the start finish line. Still the back stretch behind. And here comes Benoit. He'll win again. Checkered flag for Cody Benoit. Second place will go to Rob Favreau. Third will go to the 21 of Dave Rabtoy. Fourth will be Roger Labounty in the 60. And then fifth will be Tyler Terry in the 40. Down to Victory Lane, and we'll throw it downstairs. Rob, take it away. All right, Rick, Cody Benoit wins again. He killed him, and Cody either started a barbecue while he was going around here, or there's a problem with his number one. Cody, congratulations. Another win. Come on over this way just a little bit with me. So what little extra did you put in the car? Uh, <laughs> nothing too much. Well, you can say now. There's no tech. Uh, I got a four-barrel carburetor, slicks, and a spoiler. That's all I did. Well, that, uh, that was plenty because you ended up winning by about uh, the full backstretch. Uh, yeah, it was running pretty good. I just want to thank all my sponsors, Liquor and Wine Warehouse, uh, WRS Investments, my means, my pops, Mike, uh, Macy, my girlfriend, and uh, all the fans for coming out here. Congratulations again, Cody. You're getting pretty good at this down here in Victory Lane. Yeah, thank you. All right, that's Cody Benoit who wins again in the Renegade Division. All right, ready to run. 25 laps to distance for the sportsman. Green flag. Billy Twight's out front with a 69. Here comes Buckle. Buckle Brandon moving through on the inside. He will take the lead away going into the third turn. And Buckle Brandon will lead the field down the front stretch, and he'll lead lap one. Brandon leads. Twight's run second. Jimmy Bushy's third. Robin Woods in the fourth spot. And it's the 24 of Keith Pelkey. Robin Wood was very fast in the qualifier earlier. He's looking to get third away from Jimmy Bushy in that number 11. Buck O'Branham's checking out. Billy Twaits running second. Here comes Robin Wood through on the inside to third. Jimmy Bushy running in the fourth position. Fifth is Keith Pelkey. Sixth is Kenny St. Germain. Seventh would be Casey St. Clair. Then Mike White is in the one. Then Brandon Atkins and Stephen Brissett. Robin Wood moves into the second position, and now he will try to chase down Buck O'Branham. Branham, then Wood, then Twaits, then Jim Bushy. Bushy trying to find a way around the 69 of Billy Twaits, and he's got it on the inside, perhaps, as they race side-by-side side into the third turn. Perhaps a little touch over there coming into turn three. Billy Twaits sideways off the fourth turn. He will fall back to the fourth spot with Jimmy Bushy going to third. Branham racing off of turn number four, about to complete lap number six. And leading by half the front stretch 
over Robin Wood in the 61. Robin's lap time's just a fraction of a second faster than Branham's in the 20. Although that lap, Robin Wood was two tenths of a second faster than the 20. And he's got a lot of laps to chase him down. And he is reeling him in. Buck O'Branham leads. Robin Wood runs second. Jimmy Bushy is third. They've already put Stephen Brissett down a lap with the 59. Fourth is Billy Twaits. Fifth is Keith Pelkey. Sixth is Kenny St. Germain. Seventh is Casey St. Clair. Eighth is Mike White with the one. Ninth is Brandon Atkins. Tenth is Stephen Brissett, a lap down. And Buck O'Branham is about to run up on the ninth place car, Brandon Atkins, and he'll put Atkins a lap down. Those cars are all racing for position. Racing for spots seven, eight, and nine. Bucko looks inside Brandon Atkins, but the white car is on the inside. Right now, Bucko Branham's boxed in. Watch the 61 close in now. Robin Wood closing quickly. Bucko is boxed. Atkins on the outside goes to the top of the track. Branham slides through the middle, and now Robin Wood, he's just going to pick through on the inside. So Robin Wood made up a huge chunk of ground in that exchange as Branham puts the 7th, 8th, and ninth place cars down a lap, and they're already halfway. Robin Wood went from about 20 car lengths back to now six. There's a car spinning over in turn number two. That's Keith Pelkey with the number 24. Eighth is Casey St. Clair with the 56. Ninth is the one for Mike White. And Stephen Brissett would be 10th in the 59. Okay, ready to run again. 13 complete on our way to 25. Green flag. Robin Wood working on the top of the racetrack has the lead off turn number two. Down the back stretch into the third turn. Buck O'Branham fighting back on the inside, drawing even into the fourth turn. Down the front stretch to the stripe. Buck O'Branham hanging on to the lead. That inside line working for the Bud Light 20. There goes Robin Wood to the back to the top of the racetrack again. Off the second turn. Had the nose out in front in the middle of the back stretch. Has the nose in front coming into turn number four. But again, the 20 hooked up off the inside of the fourth turn, but at the stripe, it looked like Robin Wood by about a half foot. Even in turn two. The rear end kicking out a little bit on the 20 car. The 61 has the nose again out front as they race into turns three and four. Here comes Bucko back after him on the inside. To the stripe this time, it's no doubt Robin Wood by four feet. Branham on the inside, Wood on the outside. Trying to pull away, can't do it. Buckle hanging right with him on the inside. Robin cannot clear the 20. Now Branham gets a good run again off turn number four. He may lead this lap. At the stripe, that was just about a dead heat. And the computer showed Bucko Branham back in front by a fraction of a second. Again, they're still running side by side. Lap 18 about to go up on the board. I have Robin to, Wood had the lead back. I have to ask, where are the transponders this week? <laughs> Those should not have been altered. Robin Wood with a good run on the outside now, but perhaps a little too hot into three and four. He had to get on the binders and allowed Bucko to get the momentum right back, and he'll take the lead on the inside. But Branham gets credit for leading lap number 19. They're even running into the third turn. Steven Brissett is going to factor in here. Let's see where he goes on the racetrack. Yeah, they're going to have enough room to get around him, but Bucko has to follow Robin Wood, and that is going to allow Robin Wood to finish the pass of Bucko Brandon. There goes Steven Brissett around with a 59. He spins off a of turn number two. We're inside five laps. And Robin Wood is checking out. The 59 will keep it rolling. 
He's on the inside of the track. We stay under green. Robin Wood has pulled away from Buck O'Branham. It was a dogfight for about five laps. But once Robin was able to clear Bucko and make the pass, he has pulled away. Two to three car lengths, the advantage for the number 61. Here come the leaders off the fourth turn. Two laps to go. And again, you've got some cars in front of them that may play a factor in this. Let's see how the lap traffic behaves. Keith Pelkey stays down on the inside. Robin goes smoothly around. Now they'll go around Casey St. Clair, putting him down another lap, and the white flag is out. No problem getting around those cars. White flag out for Robin Wood. 2010 Sportsman Track Champion. He won six times during the season. And it looks like he is on his way to another victory. Here he comes, final time for the season. Robin Wood takes the checkered flag. He wins again. Buck O'Branham is second. Third will be Jimmy Bushy with the number 11. Fourth will be Billy Twaits. Here he comes off of the fourth turn with the number 69. And then it's going to be Kenny St. Germain finishing in the fifth spot with car number eight. Seventh checkered flag for Robin. He's climbing out of his car. Give him a nice round of applause, everybody. The 2010 Sportsman Track Champion closes things out with another victory. Well, lap traffic helped a little bit, and that bucko got hung up, and uh, you were a good 15 to 20 car lengths back, and then you closed into about five or six. And then uh, five laps where uh, you and Bucko were going uh, back and forth, exchanging the lead. Yeah, the, my car, with these uh, tires on, it takes a while for it to come in. Uh, I think the longer as we ran, the better it got. Uh, it definitely got a break when the caution came out. But uh, it was a lot of fun tonight. We got uh, different tires, a different carburetor, and uh, well, as you can see, a bigger spoiler. But uh, it was a lot of fun. And then racing with Bucko, it's, uh, it's always exciting to have the 20 at your door and you guys went back and forth for several laps. Yeah, we raced each other really hard, but we usually raced each other really clean. And uh, like, a good example of it tonight was uh, we never even laid a tire on each other, and uh, we put on a good show for the fans that did show up. Did he tell you any of his secrets in terms of what he was going to do? No, actually, we kept everything pretty quiet. Uh, actually, he got the tires for us Thursday night. They're actually Gene Paul Sears used tires. And uh, he went over and got them for both of us, and pretty much... Uh, that's all we did. Congratulations again. It's been a great year for you. Thank you. All right, Robin Wood, everybody. Robin Leon gets Gagne. another win. The CO2 is Craig Real, and it's the two for Adam Bartomey, the zero for Craig Ormsby, and the one L for Michael Labresh. That's the field. Here they come. Green flag. And I think the key to this one is patience for Bertie Ohm because he is more than a half second faster than everybody else with the one Quebec, and right now he's boxed. He's got Dan Brown on the inside, and right in front of him is George Foley with a 46. Out front is Jason Bruno with a 623. Andy Powell's running second. Mike Finney is third. Keep an eye on the one Quebec of Pierre Bertillon, who right now is seventh. Mike Finney running in the third spot. Fourth is Cody Benoit. Fifth is Michel Vien. Wheel to wheel for the sixth spot. The 40 of Dan Brown and the 46 of George Foley. Then it's wheel to wheel for eighth between Matt Woodruff and the 55 and the one for Bertillon. And now a lane opens up on the outside. Bertillon picks off Dan Brown. 
Next on the list would be the 46, the team cars out of the Vienne stable. The 46, George Foley tonight. And the 25 is a Michel Vienne driving Max's modified. Max under the weather. He's got the flu bug, so he's not able to race this weekend. Jason Bruno leads with a 623. Then it's Andy Powell running in the second spot. Third is Mike Finney. Fourth is Cody Benoit. Fifth is George Foley. Sixth is Pierre Bertillon with the one Quebec. Running in seventh, it is the 25. Oh, smoke again billowing out of the four of Leon Gagno. Similar situation in practice. That, that's a problem that they've been having with the uh, Gagno number four. Leon works underneath Dan Brown in the 40. Some of the drivers operating without the roof. You can see them at work inside the race car. The leader, Jason Bruno in the 623, running up on the back of the pack. Andy Powell hanging right with him. Powell borrowing a super modified wing. He's got the super wing on top and he's got a super wing on the nose of his car. That's his regular number three modified. Scaled down with the wings added. Bertiome is still boxed behind George Foley's 46. Jason Bruno goes around Michael Labresh in the 1L. Labresh is at the back of the pack, and next he'll put a lap on Craig Ormsby, who purchased the former Don Scarborough 11. Bruno showing the way, Andy Powell running in second. Third, it's Mike Finney. Fourth, George Foley has moved past Cody Benoit. George Foley to the fourth spot. Fifth is Cody Benoit. Sixth is Pierre Bertillon. And Bertillon has not made the progress I thought he would make. Oh, look out, we got a car spinning. That's Cody Benoit spinning. Michael Abresh drifts up the track. That got a piece of Dan Brown in the 40. And we're gonna have a yellow flag. Now he's on the outside of the third row with Leon Gagno on the inside. Cody Benoit returns, he'll fire from the back of the pack. All right, here they come. Green flag. Oh, Mike Finney, right rear tire flat. Right off the rim with that number 26. Right rear tire flat on the Finney car. George Foley off the pace. And perhaps that's why Woodruff pulled up to the outside. I think he might have been trying to tell George that he's got a tire going down too. Andy Powell has taken the lead away from Jason Bruno. Andy Powell out front. Powell was not fast earlier in the qualifier. And right now his lap times is going to bring out a yellow flag for George Foley. The 26B yeah, that... is really going to have to hustle because they're on the hammer now coming off the fourth turn. Here they come along the front stretch. Green flag. Andy Powell pulling away along the back stretch. Jason Bruno in the second spot. Leon Gagno running in third. Here comes Bartomey with the one. Looking on the inside, that lane was taken away by Adam Bartomey in the two. There goes Bert Diom in the one. They're on the outside of Craig Riel. Riel works on the inside. Leon Gagno right in front of him. Pierre Bertillon right up towards the wall, starting to hustle towards the front. He knows it's go time. Bertillon to the fourth position on the outside. Andy Powell shows the way. Smoke again billowing out of the four of Leon Gagno running in the third position. Bertillon looked high, now dives down to the inside. Leon Gagno hanging on to that third spot as Bertillon had to tiptoe as he approached the back bumper of the four. Jason Bruno continues to run in the second position. Andy Powell turning lap time 16.5. That was a 16.3 lap for Andy Powell. You consider a real fast lap for the modified division as about a 16.1 that we'll see Patrick Dupree and Martin Roy turn here on a regular Saturday night. Andy Powell leading. That rear end kicking out a little bit over in turn number two, but he can really pick it up along the front and back stretch. You can 
see the aerodynamics of the super modified wing as the air pressure will flatten that wing out along the front and back stretch. And then that wing will elevate in the turns, helping to stabilize the back of the race car. Bertillon closed quickly on Leon Gagno, but now that car seems to be falling off. Perhaps the right rear used up by Pierre Bertillon. Andy Powell showing the way with Jason Bruno holding off Leon Gagno right now in that second spot. Third is Bertillon with a one. A scratch that. Fourth is Bertillon with a one. Fifth is Craig Riel with the CO2. Andy Powell will put a lap on Craig Ormsby. Jason Bruno maintaining about a car length advantage over Leon Gagno with the number four. Powell's lap time, 16.4, was his last lap. This time by Andy Powell lays down a 16.3 flat. Top five cars have worked around Craig Ornsby, the fifth place car about to do that, Craig Riel, over in turn number three. Five laps to go now for Andy Powell. Jason Bruno has maintained that second spot. Leon Gagno hasn't been much more than a car length to two off of his back bumper, but Leon has not been able to really challenge to get that second position. And Bertillon, who I thought would really race to the front of this field. Oh, he's got a right rear tire going down. There goes Bruno in the 623. He slides off the top of turn number two, and that's going to bring out a yellow flag. Single file on this restart. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green flag. Gagno looks inside. Here comes Leon Gagno to the inside over at turn number two. He'll take the lead away along the back stretch. Leon Gagno showing the way with a four. Andy Powell sliding back to the second spot with the three. And Leon Gagno's checking out. Leon Gagno pulling away from Andy Powell. Two laps to go this time for Shazie's Leon Gagno. Andy Powell running in second. Craig Riel trying to take that position away from Andy. They'll run wheel to wheel into the third turn. Powell was hot into the turn, has to get on the binders and that allows Riel to come through on the inside. White flag out. Final lap for the Modifieds. And the veteran from Shazy is going to get the win. Here comes Leon Gagno off the fourth turn. He's going to win it. Second will go to Craig Riel with a CO2. Andy Powell third. Matt Woodruff fourth. Fifth to Mike Finney. Sixth to a hard-charging Pierre Bertillon. Rob is on his way downstairs. He'll be chatting with Leon Gagno. Rick, we're waiting to get a word with Leon Gagno. Leon's got his helmet off. Always popular when uh, Leon pulls into victory lane. All right, Leon climbing out. Give a nice round of applause, everybody. Chasey's Leon Gagno gets the win. All right, he's got to get out the unconventional way this time. All right, now he's all set. Leon, who came up with the idea to put uh, the old shower curtain on the side of the car? 
Uh, one of my buddies down in Malta had this set up. He told me he ran it at Lebanon Valley, and he said, you're welcome to try it. And uh, we didn't get much time on it, but boy, I'll tell you, it does work. <laughs> what was the problem that you had much of the day? A lot of smoke. Same thing in practice. What, what was it that uh, was producing that, all that smoke? Well, we thought she sucked uh, an intake gasket in and was sucking oil through the intake, but apparently that wasn't all of it. But we tried to do it without pulling the intake off, so we might have not gotten it in right. Tell me about the winning pass over in turn two on the restart. Andy Powell seemed to drift up over in the second turn, and you were there to take advantage. My car was really good on the bottom. It looked like Andy's right rear was just about bald. I was, you know, he's a good fellow, and I would have been glad to see him win. Um, you know, I love racing with him. Him and I race together real clean, and uh, he does a heck of a job. This has been a very busy racing season for you. Have you had fun between here, Devil's Bowl, Albany, Saratoga? You were going to start taking it easy again, but this has been a real busy summer. Uh, it's just like old times. Uh, we used to race uh, three nights a week, and those are the tracks. Uh, Malta, we won one down there this year. We have never won one there. Uh, we won a couple. We had quite a few seconds. Uh, we had a good year. Congratulations on uh, closing out the season with a win here at Airborne. Thank you very much, and thank you, everybody, for coming. That's Leon Gagno, everybody. He gets the win. And we're ready for a start. Four-cylinder main event. Final event of the 2011 season for our regular divisions here at the racetrack. They pick it up off turn four. Green flag is out. Gilligan gets the good jump on the outside. He's going to lead him off turn two and up the back stretch. Collins second in the 0-2. Sales is third. LaFountain looks to the inside of Bouye. They battle for the number four spot. Here comes LeGrave looking to the inside of LeVere as they come off turn four. Those two cars are side by side. Now LeVere throws the four to the bottom of the racetrack. He looks to get by the Fountain 20 in the double zero of Bouye. And he'll get by the Fountain. And now he'll get by Bouye as they go into turn three. Bouye sticks a nose back in front. We'll see what LeVere does as they come off four. It's LeVere up to the number three spot, number four spot rather. Gilligan leads the way in the 77. He's got five car lengths on the Chad Collins 0-2. Eric Sales, he's the new owner of the Donormobile. He runs in the third spot. Caution flag on the speedway as Scott Richner has turned the 21 in turn number four. Gilligan on the inside and Chad Collins on the outside. Sales in the 95, LeVere in the four. Gilligan gets a good jump as they come off turn four. Green is out. Chad Collins fell asleep coming off turn four, and he just let Gilligan drive away. He's going to lose his second spot to Sales. And look out, Bouye in that double zero sideways. Everybody stacks it up. There's damage on the speedy Brissett 0-3. It's going to bring out a caution flag. The right front is down. Four laps down, 11 remain in this four-cylinder feature event. Run, what's your brung night? No tech. The winner is the winner. They come off turn four. Back to the green. Gilligan gets the jump in the 77, drifts it high off turn two. They'll run single file, top three spots up the back stretch. Martin, Sales, LeVere run one, two, three. Bouye has the double zero in fourth, followed by LeGrave, 72. Collins in the zero two, runs into the sixth spot. Jamie LaFountain, seventh. Mike Whalen is eighth. Chris Clark is ninth. Brian Caro, tenth. Eleventh spot goes to Tim LaFountain. Twelfth is Malcolm Woodward. Thirteenth to Tim Gadway. Fourteenth is the 22 of Josh LaVarnway. Fifteenth spot to Scott Richner. Jimmy Collins is sixteenth. The turd is seventeenth. And Rob Sines got the best view. LeVere has moved to four into the number two spot. 
Crystal Ball starting to look good once again. Now up the back stretch. LeVere moves right alongside the Martin 77. Sticks his nose in front, and Chris LeVere has the lead. And the crystal ball says, I told you so. Yeah, but you picked, you said top three. And the three cars that were the top three at the time of your crystal ball prediction, they're all still there. So nothing's really changed. Oh, I said it would be four, 77 and 95, and they've all flip flop spots. So you went with the trifecta. You actually, that was the trifecta order you predicted? Right, okay. right. When this is done, you're gonna owe me about 125 bucks. <laughs> So the top three cars, a couple of car lengths between them. Then it's five, maybe six car lengths back to the LaGrave 72. The Fountains 20 moves up on the outside of the Collins 02. They battle for that fifth spot. Five laps remain for Chris Lavere. He's going to go back to back if he can hold on. You can ask him, Rob, about that motor that's in that car. I think he already put something about it online, didn't he? He may have taken that out of his streetcar. LeVere just pulls away from the 77 of Randy Martin. Eric Sales in a very comfortable third place spot. And Jamie LaFountain is well back and forth. He starts to pull away from the Grave 72. Who's got out that fifth spot? Two laps remain for Chris LeVere. He's got to pass a turd, and then he'll be home free. It's almost a guarantee to good health. Chris feels much better now that he's past that turd. White flag is out. The four car passing the scoreboard the final time. Checkered flag will be in the air as LeVere comes off turn four. He will win it. Crystal ball is four for four. Martin finishes second. And third spot goes to Eric Sales. Jamie LaFountain, fourth, fifth, goes to the 72 of Curtis LeGrave. The liquor and wine warehouse packages go to 502-599. That's 502-599 and 547-634. 5047634. The Explo Easy Stow. One month free. Two of those. 5026111. And 204681. 204681. And the Airborne Fan Book goes to 502685. 5026. Eight, five, and with that we will go downstairs to racing Rob Knowles. All right, Rick. Chris Lavere is back in victory lane. He won two weeks ago the final point event for the mini modified division. Chris takes home another checkered flag. Still the 20 lap vintage race to go. And how about a nice round of applause for Chris LeVere, everybody, who gets another victory. We'll bring you over this way so we can see on cam. You stopped a little short there, the start finish line. Well, what was the trick tonight, Chris? I thought I saw something online about a really super duper engine that was going in this. Uh, we didn't have time for the engine. Uh, it ended up being just tires. It's all about tires. The car was on a, on a rail. I could put it anywhere. I got little mini NASCAR slicks on there today. Well, you could tell in the qualifier that it was going to be fast. Oh, yeah, right away. Uh, we only took two laps in practice. We didn't even need practice today. And I saw you as I was walking back over here to uh, the, the tower and the announce booth. I saw you and passed you, and you were smiling. So I knew at that time that you probably had something good. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, when I seen you earlier, I knew I had to win already. Well, congratulations on another victory. And now you head back to Gabriel's. You've got the long winter months in Gabriel's where you get about 38 feet of snow. Uh, i got to build a couple more cars. Uh, for next year, we got a couple more guys driving. So uh, we'll be pretty busy all winter. Uh, I'd like to thank my sponsors, uh, Greg, I can't even do, Gregor's and Outside Groove, uh, Coral's Contracting. Of course, everybody here, Mike, Steve, Denise, it's on the show here. Uh, it's a, this is the best track in the Northeast. Nice job, Chris LeVere. Thank you very much. All right, that's Chris LeVere. Who gets all. another Vic? In the three. Landis Karen, as we mentioned, the 35. Daniel Werner is in the 77. Sylvain Massico, the 65. Sylvain Lacroix is in the 123. Wes Mooney, the 79. Time by. The D1 will set the pace as they come off turn four. We'll look for a green. Butch says, go, and we're racing. Lacroix on the inside. Daniel Werner on the outside. They run it up the back stretch the first time. Here comes Karen looking for a way through, but the door is shut. They'll complete lap number one, and your leader will be Bruno Lacroix. Werner sticking right with him on the outside. Karen just begging for a way through as they head up the back stretch. Looks to the inside, and again, Lacroix shuts the door. Now on the outside, Werner sticks his nose in front, but Lacroix comes right back. Werner got a little bit sideways, as did Lacroix. Uh-oh. It's expensive when you wreck a vintage racer. They almost lost a couple of them up there in turns three and four. Tough to find those parts online. Your leader is still Bruno Lacroix in the D1. But as he slips up, he's got Lanchus Karen sitting right on his rear end, begging for a way through. Now, Rick, we have seen other vintage groups here at the Speedway in the past, and sometimes that's a little bit like the WWE, if you know what I'm saying. But these guys Pink. are really going after it. On the outside, we've got a new leader. Werner takes the lead in the 77 up the back stretch. Moving into the second spot. Is the Massico 65, as the D1 appears to be the un. The three of Saren is on the move up the back stretch. Now Karen finally works his way to the outside and he'll get around that Bruno Lacroix D1 as well. Twenty laps the distance tonight for the Quebec finish stock cars. And your leader is Daniel Werner in the 77. It is a 1966 Chevelle. Competed at Three Rivers. Yeah. Here comes Karen quickly gaining on those top two. He's moved into third. And the three of Seren is right with him. Challenge for the lead is on the outside. Massico in the 65 pulls right alongside the 77 of Werner. Sticks his nose in front, takes the lead as they come off turn four. Werner trying to come back as they're halfway. Werner's going to fall to second, and he's going to fall to the third spot as Karen powers up on the back stretch to move in a second. Werner tries to battle back on the inside. Not going to happen. He'll fall to third. He may lose that position. He's moving up quickly as Seren in the three.
Karen now right onto the back bumper of the 65 car. As Saran moves into third, we've got a caution flag out. Ready to go back to green. 11 down, 9 remain. Glenn just Karen says, see ya. He's going to wait for the 65 and make it a show up the back stretch. Do you care to retract your WWE comment, Rob? Oh, uh, maybe not. <laughs> He's got so much power in that 35 car. He could just drive by him any time he wanted. Well, 65 is trying to make that car as wide as possible. He's using the first, second, and third groove in the middle of the backstretch. Sylvain Massico, your leader in the 65, with Langes Karen in the 35. Biding his time in that second spot. You think he's waiting for the white flag lap, Rick? It's quite possible. And again, maybe not. <laughs> And maybe just drive through, pass him for crying out loud. <laughs> Five to go. Oh, the 79 of West Mooney is slowing. West will not win tonight. Karen had the lead at the stripe that time. He leads lap 16. But Massico tries to come back up the back stretch, and maybe now, and just Karen says it's all over. Oh, Metal Man's got trouble. The local vintage guys are falling apart at the seams. Metal Man's got smoke coming out his rear. Karen now drives away from the 65 of Massico. Here comes that three car of Saran on the outside. Two to go. White flag displayed for the 35 of Karen. Massico is second. And look at Karen just drive by. Drives away from the second place car. They come off turn four, final time. Langes Karen is your winner. Second spot goes to the 65. Uh, Sylvain Massico, third spot goes to the three car. We come back. To win in 2010, the final event of the season. From Quebec City, Langes Karen, the driver of car number 35, is your winner. Rob is headed down to Victory Lane. And he'll have a talk with our winner. It's always fun to watch Rob interview Canadian drivers. Sometimes his questions have to tend to... Pick up a bit of an accent as well. He's made it to victory lane, both Rob Knowles and the 35, so let's go back downstairs for the final time of 2010. Rob? All right, Rick, we'll get a word with Langes Karen in just a second. Hey. 
All right, how about a nice round of applause for Bland just Karen? Now, I'm told that you last won a race here in 1971. Yeah, that's true. And back in the day, was your nickname the Quebec City Flyer? Well, I don't know if it was, but... <laughs> I heard from a, from a little mouse that that might have been the nickname. <laughs> Probably it was. <laughs> well, your group, of course, travels across Quebec, and this is the first time that you've come down to the States? Yeah, the first time. And uh, what is, what's the mission of your group? Well, it's kind of a, an old group, you know, that still like to drive and have fun and uh, not run over each other <laughs> and don't twist the motor, you know, it's kind of easy sure. and cheap and, uh, and a lot of fun because yeah. you're going fast and you're racing, but you know, you don't race in for the money, it's just for the hell of it, it's just for the fun. And at the same time, you're bringing back a lot of good memories, I'm sure, for people that are in the grandstand and for the drivers also. I hope so. I hope that we do that because it is some kind of mission for us, you know, to do that. And your first trip down here to Airborne Speedway with your group, a success? Yes, sure. Well, you had a good time, that's for sure. Yeah, and I really like the new surface. I was here on the last, the old surface, and mm -hmm. here it's way better, you know. It's wide and all kind of room, and it's a lot of fun, different grooves and stuff, you know. It's a lot of fun. Well, thanks for coming down, and uh, good luck to your group, and hopefully we'll see you again. I hope you invite us. We're going to come down for sure. Thank okay. You. Thanks so much, and Rick, that's the uh, final race for 2010, and we'll send it back up to you in just a second. But we really want to thank all the supporters and fans that have been regulars here at the Airborne Speedway throughout the 2010 racing.